All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to another True Footy AFL round prediction video. Today, I'll obviously be looking at round 15, moving things pretty quickly because we have got one day before the games kick off tomorrow between Hawthorne and Adelaide, and then we've got a second doubleheader game on a Tuesday night with my boys taking on the Dons. So, like so many other weeks this year, there's a bit of urgency about this video, so I will get straight into, first of all, acknowledging the winners of the competitions we have going at True Footy. So the first one is, once again, Harrison Hyde has made it two weeks in a row leading the fantasy competition, uh, put up a score of 1942, that's huge, and his average is now 17 Oh five, so still leading the league. Well done, Harrison. On the footy tipping side of things, you got Jai V, who took out, I believe, his first round of the season with a score of eight and four was his margin, so that's bloody accurate. The total winner is still Julian, still leading by two with a total of 93 points, and his cumulative margin is 435, so Julian's creating a little bit of space at the top. Before we get into the round, guys, I do just want to acknowledge that Coal World has dropped its fourth episode of the podcast uh, just earlier today, actually, so uh, go check out the link in the description and uh, help get around the new channel. Really appreciate it. Without further ado, though, let's get into round 15, starting, of course, with a quick look at the current ladder. You've still got Port Adelaide, Geelong, Brisbane, Richmond, and West Coast making up that top five, although I think Richmond and West Coast have shuffled there after last week's result, but that top five teams really starting to embed themselves as far as I'm concerned. Collingwood have come up to sixth spot after keeping Carlton goalless in the second half last week, um, and somehow they're back, their season's back on track with only, you know, what is it, half a win behind West Coast, although they have a game in hand. St. Kilda and Melbourne make up the top eight in front of GWS and the Bulldogs, who are scrapping for their season. Essendon in 11th, barely kept their season alive last week with a big comeback win over the Hawks. And then Carlton, Gold Coast, Fremantle sort of make up that no-man's-land set of teams who are not quite in the finals race, but also probably better than the bottom four. Hawthorne still sit in the bottom four following last week's poor result. And then Sydney, North, and Adelaide really are our three worst teams this year. So we'll kick it off with a bottom four clash. Hawthorne hosting the Crows at Adelaide Oval, which is curious in itself, but it's one of those things that's kind of slipped under the radar because both sides are so crap that nobody cares that uh, Hawthorne are losing a home game here to Adelaide. I touched on it already, but Hawthorne played against the Bombers in that big rivalry game. They got something like, was it, six goals in front at halftime and lost the game, got absolutely monstered in the second half. Essendon probably... You know, flick the switch and realize their season was on the line and Hawthorne clearly don't have too much to play for, but still a fairly inexcusable performance to over, like have a team overcome you who's not going that well themselves and have their own injuries. Not a great performance from Hawthorne, but like I said, maybe not a lot to play for. Coming up against the Crows, who I wouldn't say have absolutely nothing to play for at 0-13, really want to avoid history by being the first team to go winless. I think they're the first team to go winless if they do, at least since, like, the war. Uh, it's been a long time since anyone's done it, if at all. They're coming off, obviously, a tough loss to Geelong a couple of weeks ago. They've been at home for a couple of weeks, maybe a chance to freshen up after the bye. This game is winnable for the Crows. That being said, I just think Hawthorne are clearly better. So I will say Hawthorne snap into gear and win this by 22 points, but this is probably one of Adelaide's um, most winnable game for the rest of the season. It may be their only winnable game. Who knows? Next up is the Eagles and the Bombers at the Gabba on a Tuesday night, like I said. Not the conditions suited to West Coast. I've banged on about that enough this season. Uh, but I thought they actually put up a fairly good performance against the Tigers on Thursday night. What lost them the game certainly wasn't the conditions. It would have helped maybe if it was a little bit drier, but Richmond were and are just a better team than the Eagles. It was a really good intensity from both sides. Maybe the scoreline flattered Richmond a little bit. I don't think West Coast were five goals worse than them on the night. But nonetheless, uh, I think that shows where Richmond's at at the moment. And thankfully, we saw an improved performance from the Eagles in this Queensland sort of condition. So because of that, I'm optimistic. Essendon, with the return of Joe Danaher last week, hit three goals three, looked really dangerous. Their forward line's looking dangerous again. Maybe they might have just sparked a little bit of uh, enthusiasm going into this back little part of the, of the season. They probably need to win almost every game to make finals off the top of my head. I reckon that's probably the case. So this does loom 
as a must-win game for them. I'm going to back my boys in here to win by 18 points in a scrappy affair, but I just think the Eagles are still a better team than Essendon. Richmond take on Fremantle now at Metricon Stadium. As I said before, Richmond coming off that game against West Coast uh, where they flex their muscles a bit, put in probably their most compelling performance this year, I think, uh, to win by 27 points. We know how good a team Richmond are on their day, and I've been waiting for it all season. They're the sort of team that comes good at the right time of the year, and I think they might have just started to pick the right time again to start their drive towards finals. Fremantle, on the other hand, a little bit... Un- well, we wouldn't say unlucky, but they have kind of came up against the Giants last week just as the Giants were starting to play in a bit of form. Again, another team who's realizing that the season's getting away from them and put in a good performance. We They scored outscored the Eagles five goals to one or something like that in the last quarter the previous week, so you could sort of see it coming a little bit. And I think Fremantle fans were quite disappointed with the performance. But at the end of the day, Fremantle have been playing a good little purple patch, no pun intended, and GWS just happened to get them at a good time. So... No real disrespect to Fremantle. I think they're playing all right, but look, the golf between these two teams is significant. I would love Fremantle to do us a favor and knock them off, but Richmond's going to win this by four goals at least. Next up, we have Sydney versus Melbourne. Sydney's last couple of games haven't been overly compelling. Reasonable loss to Port Adelaide last week, who of course lead the leader, lead the ladder rather, and Fremantle the week before in Perth, they got done by about five goals pretty convincingly. Not a whole lot to write home about for Sydney. I've talked about it before, the rebuilding side and another side with no finals potentially on the agenda. So you look at this part of the season and think, is there really much to play for in terms of getting the players up and motivated to knock off a side like Melbourne, who by contrast have just snuck into the eight and are playing some good enough footy to play finals. Of course, they've had some really poor performances in between those good performances, but I guess that's just what happens when you're a mid-table side. They sit seven and six at 112% and uh, seem to be tracking along pretty well after what was a really crucial win over the Saints uh, up in Queensland there. A real battle between two sides, hoping to play finals. Good chance both of them makes finals. So that was a little mini final there. Petraka kicked four goals. Easy a brown low smoky. There's probably a chance of that at the moment. Look, with Melbourne's momentum, they should win this game convincingly. But because Melbourne played well last week, that almost makes me want to tip against them. No, I'm going to tip the Ds this week. They're a better side. They've got plenty to play for. They're going to win by 25 points. Now we've got the Giants and the Blues at Metricon Stadium. The Giants, as I alluded to, starting to play into a little bit more form. They've been underachieving this year. Haven't been playing to the standard that we know they can. Haven't optimized their talent in the same way they have in previous years. Uh, that being said, obviously coming up, uh, coming off a convincing victory over the Dockers, which will have got their confidence up a little bit. And again, four or five rounds to go in the season. I think it's four now. Um, This is go time for the Giants. And I think they're going to bring that intensity from last week into this game against the Blues, who I didn't think they were a realistic finals chance last week. But that that loss to the Pies, which would really be a punch to the guts after leading at halftime and not goaling in the second half, Uh, That's pretty much killed off their season, and while there's been plenty of positives for this season, it might just be a bit of a gut-wrenching blow that might take the wind out of their sails a little bit. I could be wrong. They could respond with fire, knowing that if they win this, they probably are slightly still in the finals conversation. But to be honest, I just think the Giants are in good form. They're a good side, and uh, from here on out, They're going to be a team to watch. So I'm going to say they're going to win by three goals. Here we go. Another finals preview. It is currently on the live ladder, fourth versus sixth. And at the start of the year, this looked every much potentially a grand final preview between two top sides. Brisbane, obviously, they had the bye last week. One thing that's good about Brisbane this year is that when they haven't been playing at their best, they're still getting the four points, which is going to be crucial in determining, you know, the finals makeup and getting home finals. Maybe they're the only team that will get home finals. I'm not too sure. Probably not. But nonetheless, uh, out of the last five, their only blip was against the Tigers, um, which is fairly forgivable. And one point wins over the nor- of the over North and St. Kilda just shows that they're doing enough. And then when I eventually do start playing good football again, they'll have enough points on the board. I think the buyers come at a good time for them. And they're coming up against a Collingwood side that is just starting to get a few players back and build a little bit of confidence. We saw them ram home a few late goals the last week and then against, you know, Carlton sort of blew them out of the water in the second half, which is a stark contrast to how the Pies started the season. They were, you know, the best first quarter team and the worst or second worst team for every quarter after that. 
Um, so they're just starting to find their groove a little bit. This is definitely winnable for Collingwood, but they just haven't shown to me enough compelling form to, for me to tip them against the Lions, who are every bit a premiership contender at the moment. Definitely, they could catch the Lions napping here, but it's going to be so hard to predict that. I'm going to say Brisbane win this by 16 points in what is hopefully a good little mini final. All right, and just like that, that is the end of round 15, a shorter round with a number of teams having some buys, but we will look at that ladder again. Top five remains unchanged, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe Richmond's moved up and Geelong down one with a bit of a buy there. Collingwood, Melbourne, and St. Kilda make up that top eight with GWS and the Bulldogs still ninth and 10th. So that ladder's not really shuffling too much at this point of the year. Carlton, Gold Coast, Fremantle, Hawthorne, Sydney, North Melbourne, and Adelaide make up the rest of the teams. And I think that is virtually an unchanged ladder up other than a couple of teams moving here or there. But that's it, guys. Let me know in the comments, as always, what you thought of my tips what you disagree with. As always, I look forward to reading the comments. So maybe as a bit of fun, let me know which game this week you think is most likely to be upset of the round. What's a real danger game for one team this week? I'd be interested to hear what you think. I'm inclined to say probably West Coast and Essendon um, to pick you know, a biased example. I think the Dons are definitely a sneaky chance to knock off the Eagles in Queensland. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Go check out Coal World, link in the description, and I'll probably pin it as the first comment as well. Would really appreciate your support on that. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.